So you're making an MMO. That's fantastic to hear. There are many players and critics who believe the MMO genre is in dire need of innovation and you just might be the person to save it. But before you quit your job and start writing the design document of your ideal MMO, there are five things you really, really need to have first. Because without these, your chances of your dream MMO actually being made or being successful are extremely low. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Josh Drive Hayes. I've created tutorials, opinion pieces, and reviews on MMORPG games on YouTube for a few years now, and I've been contacted by many, many people claiming to be making an MMORPG. They've contacted me through YouTube comments, Twitter, Twitch, or Discord to let me know they are working on a game that they would like to play. And it's always great to hear about people making games, and I try to give as much of my time as I can to talk to people about these games. The problem is that whenever I start to ask specifics, like funding, or timeline, or past experience, it always tends to go the same way. It's always an individual, or a small team, who are full of passion and full of energy, but not always full of ability, not always full of experience in either marketing, game design, or business. Now, I don't want to discourage anyone from trying to make an MMO. Small teams have made fantastic video games throughout the years. Portal, Terraria, Minecraft, Tomb Raider, Goldeneye. Some of the best games we have were made by a small team. But an MMORPG is a massive undertaking with many points of failure throughout the entire process. And the failure rate is incredibly high. So if you are thinking about making your own MMO, I've put together this list of five things that I believe you need to have before you start developing. Before we begin, consider dropping a like on the video or subscribing to the channel. Ringing the bell means you'll get all the future video notifications. As usual, a massive thank you to this very quickly growing list of patrons and Twitch subs who support the channel and keep it growing. More on how you can support at the end. For now, let's begin. Now these five things are not designing or world building tips, because that is easy. Most people can come up with those. I'm not going to talk about your magic system, or your crafting system, or your fantasy sounding races or names, or your thousand year history of your main city that was built by a falling star. I don't care about your lore, or your character's history, or your game's future. I don't particularly care about the classes versus classless system you've got going on, or tab targeting versus action combat, or your magic system, or using skills in or out of combat, your reactive bosses, your living worlds, because all all these ideas can be eventually discovered by a creative team of people. You can grab a load of creative people, sit down, you can hash out a load of ideas in a day. I do not care about your ideas because at this stage, ideas don't matter. I'm not concerned about your world building because you won't be able to build a world unless you have these five things. Ideas are cheap. The ideas guy is not a position you need to fill. Everyone in the creative industry is an ideas guy. These are five actual practical things you need to have before you start. Number one, money. Let's start with the obvious. Making anything is expensive. The bigger a project, the more it's going to cost. And there are very, very few games bigger than MMOs. Let's start with some examples. Adjusted for inflation, World of Warcraft cost around $55 million to make. The Elder Scrolls Online clocks in at around $200 million. And Final Fantasy XIV is rumored to be around $120 million. But remember, that game had to go back to the drawing board and be remade into A Realm Reborn, which would have cost even more. They are absolutely insane amounts of money, but you're a small independent studio or a single person. You're not aiming for that level of quality or polish. What does this mean for you? Well, first of all, the audience don't care that you're a small team. They will only care about the final product. While there are players who will value and understand your struggles as an independent developer, most of your player base will simply want the game to be good. They will want their gameplay experience to be enjoyable. So let's break down some costs. You'll need to pay staff wages and we'll need to look at development time and skill levels later on. Then you'll need artists for concept art, voice actors, quest writers, bug testers, market research specialists, and marketing advisors. Oh, and remember, around 40 to 50% of your entire budget will be used on marketing alone. 
This may sound high, but in a saturated market where everyone is making an MMO, word of mouth cannot be relied upon. You'll need Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads, actual poster ads, YouTube pre-roll ads, sponsorships with content creators and trailers. Unless you are developing your own engine from scratch, you will need to buy the commercial license to use whatever engine you choose, then whatever placeholder assets you're going to run while the game is being made. You will need to rent or buy a physical server, and then the bandwidth you want to allocate for it, along with specific digital security or physical security for that thing. You'll also need customer support agents. If you're working from an office, you'll need to rent the floor space and pay for the lights and the heating. So, taking development, staffing, location, assets, testing, marketing, and security into account, a decent figure to aim for for a small scale but still successful MMORPG would be around one million dollars. A million dollars may sound like a lot of money to you or to me, to an individual it is, but to a company, to a creation studio, a million dollars is actually a relatively low budget video game. But let's imagine you've got a million dollars lying around and you are willing to spend it on the riskiest possible genre, the genre least likely to see a return on investment. What are you gonna need next? Well, after you've got the money, you're going to need time. MMOs take a long time to make. For example, World of Warcraft was in development for five years, so was Guild Wars 2. The Elder Scrolls Online was in development for seven years, and Star Citizen has so far been in development for nine years, with no real end in sight. All of these games were made with dedicated teams working full-time on them, with overtime and crunch time toward the end of the production cycle. Making an MMO is not something you're going to be able to do in your free time. You're not going to be able to throw a few hours a week and make this. Making a game as a hobby is great. I've messed around with RPG Maker and wasted a few hours building terrible games. But an MMO is going to demand your focus. When we talk about time spent dedicated to doing something or to learning something, think about the actual time spent doing it, not the overall time from when you started to where you are now. Here's an example. I used to teach martial arts full time as a job, and people would say to me, oh, I've been training for three years, or I've been training for four years. But what they actually meant was they go to a one hour session once a week, and they miss a couple of sessions a year. So over three or four years, that might mean they've trained for a hundred, to 150 hours. Saying you've done something for three years sounds impressive. Saying you've done something for 100 hours suddenly puts it into perspective that actually, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that long. You could do something for 100 hours within two or three relatively dedicated months. If you're going to make an MMO, you need to actually put the hours in. If you're working alone, let's say five years, if you're in a team, let's say three. But that's assuming you make it your full-time job, working eight hours a day, six days a week. If you're working on your own, that would mean you need to dedicate around 48 hours a week to this game over three years. That's just shy of seven and a half thousand hours. And this is for a smaller scale game. Working alone, if you have a grand ambitious game, that number goes up exponentially. Now you might be thinking, it's okay, I'll just take longer. I'll take, say, 10 years to make my game. But if you do that, by the time you reach the end of the development cycle, technology will have moved on so much that the very foundation of your game may be outdated. The longer you take to make something, the more likely it is that better technology will be developed and begin to exist, and you will need to go back and rewrite parts of your game to take advantage of this because the audience will come to expect it. The longer your development cycle, the more likely your game is to be outdated on the very day it releases. So let's assume you have one million spare dollars and seven and a half thousand hours free. Next up, you're going to actually need some relevant skills and experience. The very first question I ask absolutely everyone who tells me they are making an MMO is, have you made a game before? Any game. I don't mind what it is. Puzzler, first person shooter, third person adventure, hell, novel. I'll take a, a graphic novel game, a board game, a card game. And the answer most commonly heard is no, which is not a good start.
The MMO genre is so incredibly complex, it will take aspects of other genres and combine them. Let's say you want to have a first person camera mode and a third person camera mode, but you also want to have archery in your game and jumping puzzles and mounts with various speeds. You're now essentially making a first person shooter, a third person adventure game, a platformer and a racing game. You've got multiple aspects of many MMOs complicated and deep enough to be entire genres themselves, and you're trying to make them all work together fluidly. Now I don't know who needs to hear this, but having an idea isn't enough. Everyone has ideas. Ideas are only valuable when given to people with the ability to make them a reality. If all you are bringing to the table is an idea, you are going to get kicked out when more useful people begin to replace you. Almost everyone working in a creative industry, especially games design, has ideas. The reason those people get hired is not because their ideas are interesting, it's because they have the ability to make their ideas work. If you are on a games design course, nice one. I hope it's useful. I would hope any teacher or lecturer would tell you do not make an MMO as your first game. The scope is way too broad. The failure rate is way too high. Start small. Make something simple, but quality. Polished. Make it small, but enjoyable to play. Prove to everyone you can make something before you try and make everything. And if this sounds like too much work for a single person, that's because it is. Making a game by yourself is challenging, making an MMO is close to impossible. This means that not only do you need to be a skilled and talented designer, a business mind or a marketing expert yourself, you will also need a team. And that is the fourth aspect. If you are working with other people, which an MMORPG will require you to do, they also need to have training or experience in whatever it is they are doing. Just because you're all friends who all play MMOs doesn't mean you have the relevant skills to make one or to market it. Deciding to start making an MMORPG with your friends because you all like the MMORPG genre but you don't have any actual skills in game design is the same as trying to start a band with your friends because you all like music but none of you can actually play any instruments. It's very important to remember, I'm not saying you and your friends don't have the potential to make an MMO. You definitely do. I'm saying that you need to actually realise that potential by training, by creating something. Potential is only worthwhile if you tap into it and do something with it. You have the potential to become a world famous bodybuilder, but you don't just waltz off to Mr Olympia and walk onto the stage. You have the potential to build a spaceship, but you don't just walk into a NASA compound and start banging bits of metal together. You need to start off slower. You need to start off at the beginning. If you're going to become a bodybuilder, sort your diet out, get training, win some local competitions. You want to be a NASA engineer? Great. Get the education for it. Start off building smaller engines, work your way up. You want to make an MMO? Absolutely fantastic. Commendable goal. Start smaller. Show me what you can do. Start off gaining the experience and the practical skills you actually need to complete this project without jumping straight into the project with no experience. Your potential must be realised and tempered before you take on this massive project. Because of the complex nature of the MMO, you won't be able to do everything alone. Time won't permit it. You'll need an engine specialist, a level designer, a character modeler, concept artist, sound designer, voiceover actors, UI designers, marketing experts, public relations experts, customer support, back-end server experts, client connection architects. The amount of people you need to ensure your game is both high quality on launch and that the launch goes smoothly is vast. And remember, you're paying all these people probably quite a lot for the skills they have and the time they will need to dedicate. Let's take a small team of five people, paid at 30 grand a year each, which is low for the skills you're going to need. This will cost you 150k in wages alone per year. And remember the three year development cycle? That's 450k on wages before you even start to see a return on investment. Then throw in an extra 50k for outside one time payments like motion capture artists or location scouts or influencer marketing and you're up to 500k. Half a million in three years on staffing alone. Then you add in your marketing budget and you're creeping up to the 1 million cost for a three year development cycle. 
capital. Then you add in the fact that you aren't even going to see any return on investment for the first three or four years, just like most restaurant businesses don't see any profit for the first three or four years and most of them fail. So now, let's say you've got a few spare million dollars, three years free. You are trained and experienced in either game development, business management or marketing, and you've got a skilled and experienced team. What next? Well, now you need the hardest part, a player base. I know what you're thinking. How can you have a player base before your game even launches? Well, it used to be that in the past, you would create a video game, sell it, players would hear about it, players would buy it, people would flock to it, word of mouth would spread around, and it might be good, it might be bad. But you're spending a million dollars minimum. You're spending three years making this. You can't afford to have it release and not be a hit. You need to have a player base pre-established, pre-built, that the moment the game releases, you have so many people trying to download it and play it that you flood the servers. That's a good problem to have. And a lot of people forget this. You need to have hype or a player base dedicated to your game already there before the game even comes out. When World of Warcraft released in 2004, it had the entire player base and fans of the Warcraft real-time strategy game to come along with it. And Warcraft 3 was the fastest selling PC game in the world at the time. It already had brand name recognition. It had a player base already built for it. Final Fantasy XIV launched and was able to leverage the sizeable fan base of the Final Fantasy franchise, which includes one of the highest rated and best selling PlayStation 1 games of all time. The Elder Scrolls Online released on the coattails of Skyrim, Oblivion and Morrowind, even adding Morrowind in as a chapter. They had one of the best selling PC games of all time leading players toward them. Now let's look at the new MMOs being worked on. The League of Legends MMO will have the might of the League of Legends player base thrown straight at it. You can't start with much more of an advantage than that. And Amazon's New World is going to have the money and might of Amazon behind it. And remember, Amazon own Twitch, so you can guarantee New World is going to get pushed to the Twitch audience on purpose. Now again, I know what some of you might be thinking. What about Ashes of Creation? That's not a famous franchise. That's got a load of people excited for it, waiting for it, raring to go, playing the alpha, videos being made for it. How's that done it? Well, that's not done it through franchise recognition. That's done it through developer recognition. It's just the same. The player base is being built up by the people involved. Notice how the developers of Ashes of Creation and the Kickstarter page heavily pushed the past experience of everyone involved, including EverQuest 2, Star Wars Galaxies and Planetside. This is not only done to leverage the experience, but to excite the player base of those games. A developer from a game you love is now making another game. Franchise connections such as Final Fantasy, and famous or well-known developers, such as anyone from Blizzard, anyone from EverQuest, anyone from Guild Wars, they all help build a fan base and a player base before the game even releases. If you are making an MMO and you don't have a franchise and you don't have any previous work and you don't have any connections to any famous MMOs or games already, then building a player base is going to be an extreme uphill battle. If your MMO isn't connected to something people already care about, then they simply won't care about it. So let's recap the five things that I think it's essential that you have, or at least have a great understanding of, before you begin creating your own MMORPG. Money, at least a million dollars. You'll need to pay for a variety of things. Staffing costs, buying the game engine, buying the assets, artists, voiceovers, actors, motion capture artists. If you're working in an office, you'll need to rent the space, lighting, heating. There's a lot of expenses. Marketing being probably your biggest one. Time. At least five years if you're developing it by yourself, three years if you want a smaller scale game made by a team. Relevant skills and experience of your own have made a game, have worked with a team that's made a game. Understand business, understand marketing, and if you can't do it, your team needs to be able to do it. All the people you work with need to have specific skills in specific parts to make sure they can handle the size of the project, all the responsibility you're going to throw at them. And then finally, the fifth one, a pre-established player base, a link 
to a popular franchise, a link to a popular game designer, a link to something in pop culture. Because if you don't have that, people will skip over your game. People will go and look at one of the many other MMORPGs being made at the time. Because if you don't have all that, you won't pull in the support you need to survive for your initial launch and then your continued gameplay. Look at all the MMOs that had so much and weren't able to do it. Shroud of the Avatar had Richard Garriott behind it. The guy from Ultima still wasn't able to pull it in. Defiance 2050 had the might of a TV show behind it. Darkscape, the full PvP RuneScape server, still wasn't able to pull back its development costs. Even Lord of the Rings, the Amazon MMO, got cancelled and that had the Lord of the Rings franchise behind it. Life is Feudal, voiced over by Sean Bean, still didn't survive. Now, if you don't have those things, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. You can work on them. You can get them. Crowdfunding can help with the money. You can eventually get enough money to quit your job and find the time. You can go to college, university. You can take online courses to learn all the skills you need. You can make games. You can buy RPG Maker. There's loads of tutorials on YouTube to make stuff. You can meet other people who also want to make games on game development forums. You can build your own franchise. You can get a job with a company. You can hire out, you can license another popular franchise and make a game for them. If you don't have those things, it's not the end of the world. If you want to see a good example of this being done from scratch, look at Adam Bon, the guy that started Adventure Quest. Take Adam Bon, a game designer I respect immensely. He taught himself how to make Flash games. He made hundreds of them and most of them failed, but Adventure Quest succeeded. He managed to make money from Adventure Quest, then went on to make Dragon Fable, then Mech Quest, then he made Artix Entertainment, the actual company. He expanded the company, dedicated himself to it, hired skilled designers, made Adventure Quest Worlds, then Adventure Quest 3D. When Adventure Quest Worlds launched, he had the money, the time, the skills, the team, and the pre-established player base. He had everything he needed. He did not make an MMO as his first game. He honed his skills and when he felt ready, then made one. So, five things I heavily suggest you have before making an MMO. Money, time, skills and experience, a skilled team, and a pre-established player base. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And again, a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support the Patreon from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, the Twitch, the Twitter and our Discord. And as always, have a great day.